Okay, hi, uh, welcome. Um, in this video, we're going to go over an example of doing assignments for this class here. So um, we're gonna, we've got a practice assignment to work on. Um, this video assumes that uh, you've already gotten your, the, watched the previous video and gotten your uh, Visual Studio Code IDE set up uh, to work with dev containers. Um, I'll show some of these steps a little bit again here, but um, you need to um, have get installed if created a github account um, as I showed in the previous video you need to have generated an SSH key and added it to your github account uh, you need to have the docker um, desktop or the docker CE uh, installed and running on your system then you have to have VS code installed uh, and you have to have the ro remote development containers extension uh, working in VS code okay um, so um, Um, so let me, uh, like I said, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably show uh, a little bit of some of the stuff again here. Um, so in particular, um, well, let, let's let's go ahead. So uh, I'm going to show you from accepting the assignment uh, and then cloning the assignment uh, repository with VS Code, then opening up assignments in a dev container, and then how you generally uh, work on um, um, building the assignments and testing them and then how you submit your work uh, for the class okay so let's um let me start with um 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 accepting the assignment so at this point i assume that you've got github already uh you, you got a, a, a github account created okay um just some things to check here i went over this in the previous video but um in your settings you know um try and make certain that you use your actual name for your github account that you use for this guy the, the name that appears in your um uh, grade book on d2l so that i'll be able to uh, uh, make certain that i'm matching your work that you're submitting to github with uh, your grades in d2l okay the other thing is that you need to have uh, an ssh key created and added so i showed that kind of real quickly um, i'll show it again here so for example um this should work if you open up um, a terminal and, and do the SSH key gen, uh, or you can open up a command prompt on Windows. However, you do that, this will actually create a key. I'm not going to do it again because I don't want to recreate the key. Uh, just hit return when it asks for like your passphrase. Uh, you, you probably don't want to have a passphrase, especially if you're on Windows, or else you have to keep entering that every time you try to do a, a get command, like a commit or a push or a pull or something. So once you do that. Uh, it, it creates a file I'm just going to use from the command line. I'm going to use uh, a little tool just to display the contents of the file. Um, so my current directory uh, here on, this is a Linux terminal, but my current directory is home dash. So when you do the key gen, um, it's going to create a file called, in your home directory, uh, and your home directory might be different, so if you're on Windows, it'll be like C colon uh, backslash users, backslash username. Uh, but then there's a, a, a hidden directory called .ssh, and then, the, then as part of creating, you know, doing that SSH key gen, um, um, it'll create two files, ID underscore RSA, uh, this is a secure shell key, that's the private one, and then the ID underscore RSA dot pub, that's the public one, okay? So you need, you can, you can kind of think of this as a password, even, even the one in the public file, but you need to copy that, right, uh, and then do like a new SSH key and, uh, and, and paste it uh, in, in there, um, get it copied correctly. Let me try that again. So um, I'll select that and do a copy. All right. And then we'll go back here um, and paste it in. Right. So, so make sure you have that. It should have, you know, something like it should start with ssh.rsa and then there'll be a, a bunch of characters and then there'll be like an email address. Okay. This doesn't necessarily have to match your email address uh, that you had and, and give it a, a good title, you know, like uh, uh, 430 dev containers, right? Um, and then the other thing I kind of skipped over, but um, um, uh, also you do need to do some quick get config, right? So in, in addition to your name, make certain that you've got um, uh, an email address. You have to have an email address associated with your GitHub account, but whatever that email address is, make sure you use that to do your configuration. Um, so um, 
Um, in particular, you know, make certain that you config your user email. So I'll show that again, get config dash dash global user.email, and then that should match. If it doesn't match, you won't get, some, some things won't quite look right when you push your commits to GitHub. So that's, that's the email address that I've got with the GitHub account that I'm using for these videos here. Right? So that sets the user email, um, and you should set the name. This won't cause any problems if you get it wrong or, or, or is different from what's in your GitHub account. But, um, but again, so that I see things correctly in GitHub when you make commits and things, um, you know, use your, the, the, try and use the same name that you have on D2L, all right? Um, all right, so that's all the, the Git configuration um, I believe that we need. Um, so let's um, uh, show them. Uh, there, there will be a URL um, in D2L for the, this practice assignment, and you should you need to, to do the practice assignment exactly like I'm going to show you here. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is get that URL, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to paste it in here. Uh, <laughs> um, Try to copy and paste that again. So, uh, but it'll, it'll look something like this. This is this is how you start uh, an assignment. So, so uh, you, you click on the URL that I'll give you in D2L. Um, when you do this, uh, it it um, I've worked. I've accepted the assignment before, so you shouldn't get the same message. It should just get get you a message asking if you want to accept the assignment or not. Okay. So you should accept the assignment, um, and what it does, this actually creates a GitHub repository for you. Um, it takes a few seconds for it to create, but if you just refresh it, uh, you'll have it here, right? So you have your link to your GitHub repository. So, so this is an actual GitHub repository for this practice assignment. It's going to be assignment zero zero, and then something like the um, the, the the name, your name that. Um, um, I gave you um, for the class, or, or the the name that you chose for your team, basically. Here, all right. Um, if um, you know, if you can't remember that URL to type it in, um, if you go to your log into your GitHub account, the way to get back to these repositories that are created from GitHub Classroom is you have to go to organizations. Um, now, your organization might be different uh, depending on what class you are, so um, I'm doing uh, this with a uh, CSCI 430 class uh, in summer here. Um, but yeah, you should find the organization for the class here, and then if you look in there, you'll see the repositories that were created. So these are my repositories in that organization for the um, uh, my GitHub account, this TMUC student GitHub account, right? So you can get back to the assignment 00, zero there that way. All right, so as, that's as a first step. Um, you, you need to accept the assignment and have your repository um, created for you on GitHub so you can see it in here. All right, um, and then uh, what we want to do is we want to clone the assignment uh, with VS Code. So we want to do like a, a normal uh, clone. Um, so cloning in Git uh, is basically making a copy of all the contents of the repository from GitHub to your local machine. All right. So the way to do that, um, and you need to clone using the SSH um, URL here, URI. Um, and you know, if you didn't set up your SSH key, if you didn't add your SSH key to your GitHub account, you know, this won't work here, but uh, but you do need to be using the SSH key. So, you know, if you clone it from this, you'll be able to uh, not only uh, download all these files to your local, but you'll be able to make commits and push them back up. And that's what you need to do in order to um, submit work for grading and assignments in this class, is be able to push commits back to your GitHub. That's where I'll see your work and evaluate it, all right? So um, uh, if you find that and, you know, copy it, um, then you want to open up your uh, Visual Studio Code, um, and uh, either from the File Explorer or from the Source Control, you want to do the the clone repository, or you can find it. You know, like um, if you like, um, um, uh, you can use the command palette to search for like clone or something like that, right? So this is a, a hook within Visual Studio Code for doing Git commands. Uh, here, what we're going to clone from um, a repository. Um, um, 
you don't really want to select the clone from GitHub. You want to directly copy that URL and then just Control V or paste it in there, right? So this is that that URI, uh, the SSH URI um, for the assignment zero um, repository, right? And again, so this is going to make a a copy of, of the GitHub repository. You have to select the location to put it. I always put all of my repositories um, in a... Um, um, oh, i got to delete the old one there that I... Uh, just a second. Um, I always put all my repositories in a directory in my home directory called repos just to kind of keep track of them. So... Um, Um, yeah, so I, I had uh, that before, but yeah, so I want to clone it into the repos, and it's going to make a directory called assignment0-tmc-student, which is a copy of all the files once I select that. So, you know, you shouldn't get an error here if you've got your SSH key set up, um, and you should go ahead and, and open up the cloned repository, all right? Um, uh, if it asks whether you trust the authors of the files in this folder, um, you want to go ahead and say, yes, I, I trust the authors. And if you want to, you can select this so that you don't get that message um, every time. Oh, I accidentally put that in the wrong directory there, so I didn't mean to select the assignment uh, one directory there. So, um, so um, I'm going to uh, do that again. So I'm going to close this folder back off again. So, but that's good. So you can see me uh, do that again here. So um, so let's, let's let me go ahead and clone that uh, again, just so you can see it again. So um, I'll select the source control, do clone repository, paste in. Uh, the URL, I still had it in my paste buffer there, hit return. Uh, it'll ask you the local place to put it, so you have to, do have to be careful, so I want to put it in my repos directory. Um, uh, yeah. And we can go ahead and open it up once it um, does it for you. So then after that, we actually, we don't want to open this up just on our host machine. We actually want to open this up in a dev container. Okay, so this is going to uh, depend on you um, having the remote dev containers extension um, installed now, right? Uh, so when you open up a folder that has one of these dev containers defined for it, one of these dev container uh, subdirectories, uh, it, you'll get a message there. It kind of it went away already uh, asking if you want to open reopen this folder in a dev container. You want to do that, but um, if you don't get that message, um, you can always open it up kind of by hand. So one way to do do that is um, um, go to the remote explorer here. So this, sh you should have this if you've installed the, the remote containers extension and you've got Docker running, okay? Um, and we, we're going to open the, yeah, so you don't really want to clone the repository into a container volume. You want to clone it into a, a folder on your machine locally and then open that folder in the container. That's, that's the best way I've found to to do these things here. So <coughs> we'll open that up uh, and I'll select again the, the folder that I want to open up in my dev container here, the assignment 00, zero uh, TMC students. All right. So uh, the first time you do this, this might take some time. Uh, for me, it, it's going to be real tight, uh, but after it's created these dev containers, Usually it's pretty quick then, right? So usually it only take a few seconds, like it just did for me. Uh, oh well, it's still going here. So um, uh, um, uh, yeah, so now we're done getting the container up and, and running stuff. All right. Um, when you first open, I again I kind of had this opened up before, so so you probably won't get anything uh, opened up for you. Um, uh, but but you will have the the folder then. Uh, here, but it, the folder is actually running inside of the, um, uh, sorry, the uh, development container here, right? Um, okay, so uh, we've basically done the, these steps, so now I'm, I'm actually going to kind of go through how you use Visual Studio Code and these dev containers to do these time. I'm going to do this relatively quickly. Um, um, 
and, and we'll talk about these things, you know. So, so I'll try and show you about implementing the, the tasks incrementally um, and how to use the, the tests that are defined, the unit tests that are defined, um, and so on. Okay. Um, so if you clone the repository um, in a local folder and then open it up in a defecator like I did, um, you will have the a file called readme.md. Um, this has all of the um, um, description of the assignment, okay? And in fact, though, this is the same as what you'll see uh, here. So after you accept the assignment on GitHub, um, the, kind of the, the home page, the, the home code page, um, that readme is also here. So this is another way you can read the assignment description, all right? Um, so, you know, uh, before doing the assignment, we, we should have done all these things already, kind of the pre-setup. We've got a GitHub account, so you can't actually accept the assignment until you have your GitHub account, um, and, and you have your GitHub SSH key set. Um, then you also have to have the VS Code ID editor um, and the remote containers installed. Okay, so I've already shown all those things. And we already accepted the assignment. That's how we got the assignment 00 repository here. And we cloned it. Um, so um, let me show you one configuration thing. So um, I like to bind keyboard shortcuts, uh, control C to do, to do a make clean, control B, control shift C to do a make clean, control shift B to do a build, and control shift T to run the tests. Uh, but by default, those, those key bindings won't be set for you. Um, so there, I, I, there should be a file in the assignment 00. Um, if you look in um, that VS code, um, there is a file called key bindings, but unfortunately, uh, um, for, for reasons, Visual Studio Code doesn't actually use it. It uses these other files like launch and settings on a folder by folder or project by project basis, but uh, the key bindings have to be global. So, but I gave these to you, so um, a key binding so that Control shift, shift c will do a make clean, Control shift b will um, do the, the default build, and Control shift t will do the default uh, run of the tests. Uh, but you have to copy and paste these, so, so be careful, but it's best to like just copy the, uh, the three uh, open and closed curly braces. And then you need to actually put those into your actual global keybind. So the way to do that is if you open up the gear and look at the, the keyboard shortcuts, um, and you can you can use the GUI to enter these things in. But um, um, I gave um, um, you know that file. So if, if you click up here, it'll open up the your actual JSON file uh, where all your key keyboard um, bindings um, are kept. Your key bindings. Um, so if I open it up, so yours will probably should be empty. Uh, so you'll want to, so, so yours will should probably look something like this when you first open this up, um, if you haven't been using Visual Studio Code. So what you want to do is just paste those those three in there. Um, so you get the Control Shift C, Control Shift B, and Control Shift T, and do a save. And, and uh, after you do a save, I just did a Control S. Uh, it should pick those up immediately. All right. Um, so anyway, those are those are the key bindings. I'm, I'm going to be using those, um, but um, um, so one of the first things you should t check is that your build system is working when you first start. So the, the, that's what's uh, what the assignment is talking about here. All right. So um, if you open up, let's say the assignment zero test file here. Um, and then you should be able to do the, those commands, like Control Shift C should run the make clean. So th this cleans up any um, build product, so you can do rebuild everything from scratch. Make sure you have a clean build, okay? And then Control Shift um, uh, um, uh, C for clean. Control Shift B will actually do the build, okay? So what you want to look for here is that it's compiling uh, uh, all these source file, .cp files are going to get compiled into what are known as object files or .o files. Um, this uh, uh, may take some time here, uh, so you, it's not done until you get this message that the terminal will be reused. Okay, So, so it's actually compiling things, and then it, uh, um, it's a little tough to see, but some of these aren't compiles, but they're links. So, so here we're linking 
three object files together into a test executable. So that has the unit test that we're going to be using for the class, um, and, and you'll see it once it's created uh, down here in your file explorer. Uh, and then it also creates another executable, the sim executable, that um, um, I may not talk about in this video, but um, that's part of some of our classes as we're actually uh, building simulations um, for um, our assignments. So. Um, and then you can try and run the test. So uh, if you do Control shift t um, it will run the, the test for you. Um, and another way to run the test is we should be set up to run the, the test runner. I'll show that later. So uh, for this practice assignment, there's actually no tests uh, actually running initially. So, so we don't see anything in the, the test runner here. So a quick aside, if your keyboard shortcuts aren't working, um, um, all those are doing is invoking a, a command line tool called make to do the build. So you should always be able to uh, run these things by hand inside of your dev container. So if you do like a terminal, new terminal, this will create a command line terminal. Um, and uh, you can do like a make help to see all of the, the valid targets. Okay, so the three that I was just doing uh, uh, that should always be defined for your assignments for this class are, you know, we, do, we have the make clean target to, to delete everything. So notice that deleted the executables, deleted the object files, and did some other cleaning up stuff. Uh, and then a make or a make all will build everything. That's what the control shift B um, is um, bound to if, if you get the key bindings to work. Uh, and then a make uh, unit tests will actually run those unit tests. Okay, And that's what we... I'm usually buying the control shift T to. Alright. So, um, so, so make certain if, if things don't build cleanly and you can, and, uh, and you can't run the test, you need to tell me. So when you first start the assignment, before you have any code, it should be in a buildable, um, and testable state, right? And, and, um, as I was saying in the slides there, you should always try to keep your code so it's building and the test can be run. Okay, so uh, so you wanna you wanna save make saves very uh, often. So every time you change a line of code or two, you wanna save it and then rebuild it uh, and rerun the test. Make certain always make certain that it's in a buildable um, and testable state. All right, that's that's part of um, um, what we what I talk about here about. Um, uh, incremental development, right? Um, never proceed to add code if your project is not currently compiling, right? So so make small changes, always make certain that it's still compiling. Um, if, if you ever get to a point where it's not compiling, immediately stop everything, figure out why it's not compiling and, and fix that and get it back so it can compile and run the tests, all right? Um, okay, so now we're actually ready to work on the assignment. So this is a practice assignment. Um, um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really matter what we're doing. We're, we're creating two functions in this assignment. One to test whether a value is a prime number or not. Uh, and then the other is going to use the is prime. So, so uh, your assignments will always have uh, tasks. And you should do these one by one in the order given. Okay. So our first task is to implement this is prime function here in this practice assignment. So what you'll do for these assignments is um, we're using this uh, a testing framework called catch2. Right? So that allows us to set up these tests. These are examples of unit tests. Uh, so we've got one test case with a bunch of assertions or uh, unit individual unit tests. Okay. So what these are saying is that uh, if you implement the isPrime function, uh, it should return true. So isPrime is going to take an integer as a parameter. It's going to return a Boolean result, true or false. Right. So one, two, and three should return as being prime. But 4 should return false, because 4 is not a prime number. It's divisible by 2. So prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by 1 in themselves. Right? So 5 and 7 are prime, but 6 is not prime. Right? So that's what the test is. So the very first thing you'll do, um, um, we're just using some C macros to uh, uh, undefine these. So if we define task 1, uh, it, it will actually enable these tests. Okay? So as soon as you do that, um, if you do a, a build at this point, you'll see that we're getting compile errors, okay, because um, um, we're trying to call the isPrime function, but we actually haven't, you haven't written that function yet, all right? 
right? So the way that these will always work is you'll first have to add, uh, we're using a multi-file project um, system here. So uh, we, we always break up uh, the declarations of our functions, member functions or regular functions into header files and then we put the implementations into source files, okay? So to implement the is prime function we first have to um, um, do a function prototype or a function declaration, okay? So if you open up the primes.hpp this is where you need to have the function prototype for this function. So this function um, the name is is prime takes one parameter that's of type integer as input and it returns a boolean result. All right? So by um, declaring the function prototype in the primes.hpp, that's actually enough um, to make the compiler happy because we're including primes.hpp, uh, which you know um, has now given a declaration for anybody that wants to use the isPrime function. The compiler knows that isPrime, that's the name, it has one parameter, it's type integer, and it returns a boolean. So that's enough for to be able to compile this file. Um, and in fact, you know, if I put this in and save, you do have to save, you know, make certain that you hit control S and save these. Uh, now if I rebuild, um, 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 it'll actually build the assignment zero tests uh, but we, we, we have link errors, okay, so this is a, not exactly a compiler error, but this is a link error um, and, um, and, you know, error messages, compiler messages in C and C++ are kind of notoriously uh, not great, um, but, but here, you know, it's basically trying to tell you that um, somebody's trying to use is prime, but when I linked everything together, nobody actually implemented, so there's no actual implementation, right, so, you know, this isn't an implementation, that's just a declaration of the function signature, the function prototype, all right? So I encourage you, you know, again, you need to always get your code back to a compilable state uh, so that you can run the tests. So you should always start by doing the function declaration for the task, task one in this case, and then you should put just a function prototype uh, that will allow it to compile and run the tests. Right? And so in this case, um, we need to put the actual implementation um, into the primes.cpp file. You'll find for this practice assignment that there's some function documentation given for you. You should, you should always put the implementation. Uh, all functions need to have function documentation. You may later on be required to write this function documentation here. But in this case, right, we gave it to you for you. Um, and um, um, is prime, you know, um, needs to return a Boolean result. Um, so, you know, I could return, like, true, right? So this will allow, you know, this isn't an actual working implementation yet, but this will allow, should allow me to compile the code, and, uh, and since it is an actual implementation of this prime, um, it should resolve the link issues here, because we've now got uh, an actual implementation of the is prime function, although it's not really working yet, all right? So let's, let's build. Um, so notice... Now it actually is compiling, right? Um, uh, everything compiles and links together. So let's try running our test. So now when we run our tests, um, you know, I did the Control Shift T or the Make Unit Tests, and I ran. So let's go back and look at um, our test file here. So notice that the first failing test here is on line 46, right? Because remember, I, I was returning true. Um, um, so it actually passes these because it's true that 1, 2, 3, but I've just hard-coded or stubbed out the function. So the first one is failing, though, is 4, because we don't have a real implementation yet. All right? Once you've got actual tests um, uh, defined and being run, uh, you can use the, the, the test runner here. So, so here, if you bring up the, the testing, uh, th this just runs the same executable. Um, I can rerun the tests here. Uh, notice... Uh, we see some um, different output now. Um, I'm going to close this off here. So, you know, this is kind of just adding um, some GUI uh, stuff for our test runner. So it, it's giving me the same information, um, so it shows that all these in red failed because it was expecting false um, and true got returned back, right? So all the non-prime values, 8, 9, 10, these are all not prime numbers. We return true, but we were expecting it to return false. All right. Um, all right. 
So let's just finish up tasks. Oh, um, um, so an important thing then, so how you actually get graded in this class is you need to make commits and push them um, to your actual GitHub repository. So that's where I see the tests um, and, and evaluate, where I, I see your code and evaluate your work. Okay? So if you open up the um, uh, source control over here on the left now, you'll see that um, uh, it's, it's showing three files as being changed because I, you know, I, I uh, uh, undefined, or I defined the, the tests in the, in the assignment zero test file. Um, I added a prototype to primes.hpp and I added um, a stub implementation to the primes.cpp file, right? Uh, in fact, you know, so again, this is, this is kind of get here. So uh, within the source control, if you click on these, you'll actually get a side-by-side -side diff uh, of what changes, what's the difference between what I've modified locally and what the file was before I'd made any changes in this case. Right? So here, I had, the only thing I had done um, is um, 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 this line here. You know, I, I defined it uh, in uh, in the test. Um, if we look at uh, primes.cpp, you know, the implementation, um, I deleted that kind of meta comment and I added in a, a stub implementation. So what we want to do is we want to what we want to stage these changes and make a commit and then push um, our commit to GitHub here. Okay, so you could you could stage these individually by hitting the plus here in the uh, source control GUI, um, or if you know that I want all of these, so I want the changes in all these files um, to be committed, um, you can do them all at once by hitting the plus on the top line here. That's normally what you want to do is is whatever file's been changed, but you, you really should you know look through these. Um, and see that you haven't changed something you didn't mean to. Right? You don't have you don't have to add everything um, uh, to your uh, commit. You don't have to add every change file to your commit if you don't want to. But I do in this case. So I'll I'll hit the plus there to stage all those. Now um, practice using good commit messages. Um, so a commit message should have a title line. Um, so a title line is just a. Uh, uh, two or three or four word title. So here, my title for this commit is task one stub function employed. Then there needs to be a, one blank line and then one, at least one or more sentences of a fuller description, okay? So um, so here we started on task one. So far we have implemented a stub function for the um, uh, for the uh, is prime um, so, so, so far we've implemented a stub function for for is prime okay um, you know we could say more you know um, uh, this commit is compiling and running the task one test though of course uh, not all tests are passing for this commit. All right. So try and practice, you know, good thing. I mean, that's a little verbose for kind of such a simple commit here, but uh, uh, you need at least one full English sentence and, and use, you know, regular English in the description here. So uh, initial capitalization, uh, period, punctuation, things like that. All right. Anyway, once you have your commit message, hit the the check mark that will actually create a commit. Okay. Now this commit is actually only local. Okay. So so I've got a commit now, um, um, and uh, which has the the changes that I just made. But that commit uh, has not been pushed yet to um, GitHub. Right. So in fact, um, let's let's show. Um, um, you'll be using the the feedback pull request a lot. So let's open that up. So we'll go to the pull request and go to the feedback. This is where um, I will see your work that you push um, and it will run the auto grader, which is really just running the, the same unit test that you're working with uh, in your local repository. Um, and um, I will give you evaluations and things here, okay? But um, um, the commit is local, uh, but you can see that we, we need to do what's known as a push or, or synchronize, right? So you can uh, sync the changes there or another way down here at the bottom, there's an indicator. Um, so there's zero changes that I need to pull down from GitHub, from the remote repository, and there's one local change that I need to push back up, right? So either way, doing either of those should sync 
um, and, and push my changes to GitHub. All right. So what you'll see now is that um, um, uh, now in my feedback pull request, and it should come relatively quickly. Uh, I see my my commit with my commit message, right? And notice, you know, you only see the title by default. If you want to see the fuller information, you can click on that to get the uh, the fuller description, right? And then the other thing I'll point out this at this point is we're running um, this workflow slash auto grader, right? This is really running the tests that you uncommented. So you should always check whenever you push a commit there, uh, uh, look at that um, and make certain that uh, it's you're getting the same test running um, and the same results. Uh, as what you were seeing locally in your VS Code, right? So in this case, uh, it's actually compiling successfully. Um, it is running the is prime tests, but uh, we're failing. The first one we're failing was the, the one on line 46, right? Um, and it's not actually yet running the find primes um, test. So. Um, oh, and, and uh, there's some system tests as well, so it's running the, but it's failing the system tests. So I probably won't talk too much in this video about the system tests. So. Um, all right. So anyway, so you should always check that, and you should always make certain, uh, and you should do these, you know, one by one, right? So you should get the task one done. Um, before going on to task two, um, you can have uh, another requirement for this class is that every task has to be in its own commit. So you need to have at least one commit per task for the assignment. You can do multiple, so, so here I'm going to end up with like two or three commits and pushes for task one. Uh, but at a minimum, every task has to have at least one commit um, push to GitHub for it. Okay, So, so I need to see you working uh, through the tasks uh, one by one. Um, for, for grading here. Um, um, all right. So let's let's just go ahead and finish up task one here. So I'll open back up my tests again. So so we want to actually implement it. So I'm not going to talk about actually implementing it here. And in fact, for this practice assignment. Uh, we give you the implementation, so you know if, if you read uh, through this more carefully under the task one, uh, we go over this, you know, uh, uh, um, defining the task one tests, um, uh, creating the prototype in the header file, um, and then creating um, a stub implementation. Um, but uh, there, there's a full solution for uh, a brute force um, solution here, so. So a brute force way to test if a value is prime or not is to check all possible divisors from 2 up to the value mass 1. So if any one of those numbers is, is an actual divisor of the value, then um, it's false that that's a prime number. But if none of those numbers are divisors, then, it's, then it is, is a prime number. So we want to return true. Okay. So um, we should be able to just like copy that uh, implementation. Um, and uh, put it into the primes.cpp. So replace our stub implementation uh, with that. Right. So now what happens uh, if I do a control shift B, um, it should build still. Notice that now the only thing that's been changed is that primes.cpp where we, we've uh, removed the, actually we haven't removed, but we put in an actual implementation for our is prime function. Um, and now, if, if we rerun our tests, like from the test runner, they're all going to be green, right? Um, um, or, you know, we can do the control shift T or, or the make unit test to, to see that all uh, tests are passing uh, at this point. Um, all right, so then um, let me go ahead and uh, let, let's go ahead and commit and push. Um, or finish finish up task one here. So, so we'll stage that change. Uh, so task one is complete. Uh, Use a brute force uh, algorithm to test all possible divisors. Try to keep your commit messages to like seventy two characters or less. 
and return false if any divisor is found. If no divisor, then the number is prime, so we return true. All right? And we'll go ahead and commit. And as usual, I'll go ahead and sync that immediately. All right? Uh, try to make certain that you never push a commit where it's not compiling. Um, and maybe your, your tests aren't all passing, but you should never push a commit that's, that's not successfully compiling um, if, if you can help it. And if you notice that you accidentally push a commit that's not compiling, you should fix that immediately and push a new commit that is compiling and running tests. Right? So now if, if we look, uh, we'll see that I've got my second commit on here for the task one com uh, being complete. Um, and um, if we look at the results of the auto grader, you know, so, so it's successfully building, um, and all the 24 assertions in the test, task one test are now passing. All right. Um, and um, let's, uh, I kind of want to finish, that's, that's most of, of, of Everything that you need to know. Um, so let's let's go ahead uh, and finish off task two. I'll do it all in just one commit here. So, uh, as usual, we'll start off by defining the, the task two tests. In this case, we're testing a function called find primes that takes uh, these three values as input, so two integers, which is like a begin and end range, um, and then a boolean result, and returns also um, it returns an integer in this case, which is the number of primes that it found between the, the ranges there. Um, so, I'm just going to copy the, um, uh, the full implementation for task two here. So, there's a full implementation example for task two um, to implement find primes. So, we'll take that um, and we'll put that into our uh, source file, primes.cpp, uh, so it should go underneath the documentation for find primes. Uh, and then, but also, you know, don't forget, I mean, you need to put the, the prototype always for the functions that you implement has to be in the header file. So um, we do need um, um, to get, and your prototype should exactly match the, 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 dec the declaration you have for the implementation. So I often, you know, first write the prototype and then copy and paste that uh, and then remove the semicolon and add the open and colon closing curly braces. So I'm doing it kind of backwards here from what I've used to do, so I'll, I'll copy uh, my signature here um, so we can paste that uh, into the, the header file. Uh, oops. Alright. Um, oh, in this case, um, we've got a, a default value for the third parameter here, so I believe, let's go ahead and see if that compiles, I believe that you can only declare the default parameter in one place, and you should normally declare default parameters in the function prototype. Um, so if I build, yeah, it seems to build, okay. Um, I guess we could leave it then. I thought that might be an error, but maybe not. And let's try Control shift t to run our tests. Um, so now we're running, we're passing all tests in the two, two test cases, right? Um, so now if we re run our tests here, we should see that we've now got two test cases, the is prime test case where all the tests are passing and the find primes is passing there, all right? So it's good, and we, there's only two tasks on this practice assignment, so we basically kind of finished um, our practice assignment here. So I'll go ahead and um, um, stage all those. Um, so we implemented the find primes function. All tests are passing uh, for this commit. All right. And uh, we'll make the commit and then we'll push it, sync it to GitHub.
And so I go back to my feedback pull request. I should see that I've now got um, uh, three commits in total so far for this assignment, including the task two that we just did. At this point, you know, what you want to see when you're done with your assignment, if you get all the tasks done and they're all working, um, is you're going to get a green check mark uh, for the, the workflow auto grader here. So let's go ahead and watch those running. So, you know, so it passed the is prime test successfully, it passed the find primes test. Um, and um, 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 we're not, we're still not passing the unit, the system tests here, but we weren't grading those on this assignment. So. Um, yeah, but I'll talk about system tests uh, at a later time. Um, so... Let's see here. Um, so we looked at you know running tests, making commits, uh, pushing commits to GitHub for the auto grading. Um, uh, we we looked at you know uh, running the unit tests and, and building from the command line. Um, if your keyboard shortcuts um, aren't set for you. Um, let's, uh, one final thing, let me show you, I mean, there are lots of other features uh, in our development environment. So one is that um, 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 there should be things set up uh, to, to run debug uh, sessions, debug tasks here, okay? So in particular, uh, normally for assignments, there are going to be two targets, uh, a sim debug session target and a test debug session target, okay? So, for example, uh, if I wanted, if I need to run the debugger um, um, on my functions as I'm doing the tests, I could select that and, and go ahead and execute, start debugging, okay? So by default, when you run a debug session, uh, it uses the GDB, the GNU debugger here in these dev containers. Um, by default, it should, you know, the, the debugger should run and it should stop at the first line of the main function. So this is a little bit, can be a little bit confusing because we actually, because if you're debugging the test framework, um, the, the, the test executable, we're using the catch2 framework and it has its own main function. So, so that's where it, it stopped here. So what I normally do is um, I just set a breakpoint. Um, let's say that I needed to, um, actually let, let's, let's stop the debugger and um, let's introduce um, a bug. So let's say for example, um, that in my is prime, um, I was dividing instead of using the modulus operator here, right? Uh, so, you know, if I save that and I rebuild, um, and then if I run the tests, uh, we'll see now that the tests are um, failing, right? Um, and in fact, you know, so the first one that's failing was the one on line 46 again, so it's, it's returning um, um, uh, um, true uh, for four here when, when we didn't, it's, 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 it's getting all of the actual primes incorrect again here, right? So let, let's say I wanted to debug that. So what I would do normally is I'd set a breakpoint uh, at the line that I want to step into to debug, or maybe set a breakpoint in this prime, um, and then we'll... Um, Start the debugger again for the, the for a test debug session. So as usual, it will you know first stop in main, but I can continue on from here. All right. So then it'll hit my breakpoint. Now um, again, if you try and step in here, it it might look confusing, you know, um, because if I wanted to step into the as prime function, it's actually again because of the the catch framework, it's going to step into a, a function that's this check false. As part of the framework here. Um, so if we try and step in, um, um, you can see it on your function call stack and, and uh, we're actually in um, some kind of operator here. So again, what I would normally do, you know, is um, I would set a breakpoint um, in um, in my is prime function where I want to actually stop now and, and kind of debug it. So, uh, so open up the primes.cpp um, and we'll set a breakpoint right here at, at um, the start of entering is prime here, right? So that allowed me to continue on 
Right. So basically at this point, so you've got the normal debug stuff if you've ever used a debugger. So you've got your function call stack. So we started in the, the catches uh, main function and did a bunch of stuff. But um, um, here uh, below our call stack is where we called the uh, um, uh, is prime function uh, in our assignment zero tests. Um, um, so we're about ready to try it out for when we were calling it with four, right? And that's where we're at right now. So now we're inside of our prime function. Uh, the, the value that was passed in is four, right? And we can step through, you know, so we can use step overs, step ins, things like that. So I can step here and, and say, okay, so the, the, the divisor is currently two. Um, so uh, really, this should have been true. So uh, because two is a divisor, which means that, that the value is not prime, which means I should be returning false right at this point. But we see that we actually skipped over it um, and went to um, checking. Um, we didn't check any more divisors because, uh, oh, uh, that could be another uh, uh, another potential bug there because I'm, I'm, I was thinking that we might want to check both two and three. Uh, we, we don't want to check one and we, we don't want to check the value itself, but I probably meant less than or equal there. Um, so I spotted something. But yeah, uh, uh, the point is stepping through this, we saw that it didn't. Return the false where we're expecting where we were expecting it to. So. All right, so and then I'll just stop the debug session there. Um, so, oh, uh, um, and uh, yeah, so I don't really want to keep that change. So another thing is, is if you want to, you know, you don't have to stage these changes. You can revert changes. So if you made something, screwed up something, you could always revert back to uh, your last kind of commit, your last good thing. I'll be be careful with that because this will throw away stuff but if I revert that back um, it will discard those local changes and I'm back to um, um, I'm back to um, um, using the, the modulus operator there so. all right all right so um, yeah so that's pretty much it for this video there are some other features that uh, will maybe use or talk about later on in this class. Um, uh, here's some links for some other things if, you, if you're um, interested in digging down more into like Unix command line or, or learning more about using Git. We'll be using the basics of Git for these classes. You need to learn enough to be able to clone it, make commits, and push your commits back um, to the uh, re repository for grading. All right. Okay, that's it. Um, I will end this video and I will see